Kadyrov turned against Putin's idol. And in case Chechens are uncontrolled by Kadyrov, this might be an extremely difficult problem for Putin. At the same time, Ukraine was approved to join NATO and Russia finally wants to talk. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and allow me to give you one minute quick update about Israel-Hamas war. And to begin with, Israel urged all the residents of sector Gaza to evacuate because they will be performing their ground operation within the next 24 hours. And most likely some attempts already began as we speak. And honestly, a lot of Western countries, they do not support this idea of Israel for this total destruction of this territory. But this is what Israel decided to do. In response to that, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Iran, Hossein Amir Abdullahian, he said that Israel will be held responsible. Without a doubt, the situation in the Middle East escalates quickly every single day, forcing the chief of Pentagon, Lloyd Austin, to personally arrive to Israel. And so this was your quick one-minute update on Israel-Hamas war, and now let's get back to our Russian-Ukrainian updates. And so yes, to begin with, let's talk about Ukraine being approved to join NATO, then we'll go to the east of the country and talk about the situation in Avdiivka, then we'll go to the south of Ukraine and talk about crucial supply roads of Russians being intercepted by Ukrainians, and we'll finalize everything with Kadyrov betraying the idol of Putin and Russia preparing for talks. And first of all, according to the Secretary General of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, all the members of this alliance agreed that Ukraine will join NATO in the near future. And if you might remember just a couple of months ago, the leaders of Ukraine, including President Zelensky, they were asked if Ukraine is ready to give up some of its territories in exchange for NATO membership, back at that time, all Ukrainians, they said that no, no way we're giving away our land if it means that we can join NATO. But apparently later Zelensky came up with one solution, that they might actually give some territories back, and this territory he mentioned will be the Russian city Belgorod. And well, as you can see right now, there are no longer such territorial demands from NATO to Ukraine. Besides that, the good news do not end here, because Ukrainian pilots will finally start training on F-16 fighter jets in Arizona next week. Right now they are almost done with their language courses, and the very first step they will go to go through these flight simulators. Then we have a statement from the representative of American company Boeing, is that the first batch of long-range missile systems up to 150 km radius GLSDB will be delivered to Ukraine very soon. And speaking about missiles and artillery, for the very first time since the beginning of this war, Ukraine surpassed Russia in daily average number of artillery attacks. And so, what about Russia? So recently the Council of Europe almost unanimously agreed that Putin is a dictator and Russia is a dictatorship. At the same time, according to the representative of Ukrainian defense intelligence, Vadim Skibitsky, Russia is pretty much everything in Russia is ready for the next mobilization, but it will not happen until the presidential elections in 2024. And the reason for this is quite simple. Something what we've already been talking about on this channel. The reason for this it is because as soon as Putin announces a mobilization, his support ratings, which we will never know if those are real or not, will definitely go down. And since Putin, he wants to become president once again, or I mean, should I say dictator. So long story short, because of this, he will not announce mobilization until he wins these elections, and most likely, as soon as he undoubtedly once again wins, this is when we might see another mobilization in Russia. And let's not forget about Putin's new best friend, North Korea, which allegedly, according to the Western intelligence, sent approximately 1,000 containers full of ammunition to Russia. And well, Russians themselves, they made pretty interesting claims. 
For example, Putin, he mentioned that the most recent development of the Russian scientists was the nuclear warhead missile called Burevestnik and pay attention here. According to him, its range is unlimited. That's right. The range of this missile is not counted in kilometers or in miles, but rather in days, weeks or months. He basically says that uh, this missile can be flying around Earth unstoppable and then even attack uh, such theoretical targets as America from the direction of Mexico. So my question also here right now, what do you think is the percentage of Russian military <laughs> government representatives who think that the missile can actually fly indefinitely? And well, to be honest, you know, there is a Margarita Simonian in the audience, so... I would say that this percentage is quite high. And speaking about percentages, by the way, guy, guys, a lot of you are still not subscribed to the Russian Dude channel. So, Mark, Anthony, Tom, Wilson, Will, I'm waiting for you, specifically you, Brandon, also, to subscribe to the Russian Dude channel. Please go ahead and do it. Believe me, guys, your subscriptions, they do help a lot to this channel, so thank you so much. And also, you can follow me on Instagram, we're getting extremely close to 8500, and the link will be down below. But okay, now, as promised, let me give you a quick update from the East, and specifically this new battle for Avdiivka, and then we'll go to the south of Ukraine. But first of all, please let me give you a very quick stop in neighboring city called uh, Belgorod, because uh, recently the local residents once again were able to hear some very loud and unexplainable noises. Next we have the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that Russians and Ukrainians, they continued combat activities along Kupiansk, Satve, Kremina front line, and Russians even allegedly secured some minor gains, which are not yet confirmed by this map. But what we do know for a fact is that Ukrainians, once again using a simple drone somewhere along the eastern front lines, were able to destroy a Russian armored personnel carrier with a lot of soldiers sitting on top of it. Just once again, another small victory by a thousand dollar drone against a multiple hundred thousand dollars combat machine. But without a doubt, the most significant offensive of Russians in the East happened in Avdiivka. And according to this video, several Russian military vehicles tried to advance closer to the front lines just to be completely obliterated by Ukrainians. Absolutely no chances left. And the same Institute for the Study of War confirms that yes, Russians do attack Avdiivka extensively, but they were not able to secure any meaningful gains, which makes it even more ridiculous for their offensive, considering how much force, infantry and military vehicles they brought, and reportedly the entire battalion has been already destroyed. We even have videos like this from the first person view of Ukrainians fighting and defending this city, not letting Russians advance at all. And as always, one of the things that Russians prefer doing is by using allegedly the prohibited by Geneva Convention munition, such as for example from this video, White Phosphorus. The videos and photos of direct combat activities are technically not allowed on YouTube. Definitely not on my channel, but if you do want to support my work starting as little as four dollars per month and also see fully uncensored episodes of the Russian Dude, you can please go ahead and check my Patreon. The link is down below, there is one week of free access for you to see if you like it or not. Thank you so much. But nevertheless, the situation in Avdiivka is still characterized as extremely complicated and tough, with Russians launching pretty much daily and nightly 24-7 attacks against Ukrainian positions. The main concentration of Russian attacks at this very moment comes from the north and south of Avdiivka, and they're also reportedly bring more and more reinforcements, both infantry and military vehicles, pretty much every single day. And at the same time, the attacks of Russians, they also go deep behind the front line, all the way to the west of Avdiivka, where now located a lot of obviously civilians. And Ukrainians, they try their best to evacuate as many of them as possible in the between the Russian attacks. Because as of right now, the evacuation is a little bit complicated, but Ukrainians are doing everything possible to stop 
Russians and to protect civilians. And according to the general staff of Ukraine, once again, yes, Russians do attack against Avdiivka, but in four days there are no major breakthroughs and they were only able to capture, pay attention here, 4.52 square kilometers of this territory in four days. Thousands of people sacrificed, one kilometer per day. This is the quality of Russian offensive. At the same time, Ukrainians were able to destroy an assault group of Russians along with two of their armored vehicles located in between Stepovy and Krasnohorivka. And well, as always, whenever Russians are pretty unsuccessful in combat activities, they do what they do the best, which is attacking residential areas. And recently, several more civilian infrastructure buildings have been destroyed by Russians in Pakrovsk. Now let me give you a similar quick update from the south of Ukraine, where Ukrainians were able to destroy a crucial resupply road of uh, Russians. And then we'll talk about the betrayal of Kadyrov, of Putin's idol. And first of all, we have some more news about the Russian Black Sea Navy, because yet another <laughs> Russian caliber missile carrier ship, let's call it ship, uh, Buyan M was allegedly targeted and destroyed by Ukrainians. This incident also happened, obviously, in the Black Sea, and just like with the previous vessel Pavel Dirjavin, which was supposedly caught on one of sea mines, apparently no, according to the defense intelligence of Ukraine and the Ukrainian Navy, it was the result of attack of Ukrainian sea drones called Sea Baby. And I mean, at this point, this is a pretty clear sign that Russia must withdraw all of its vessels from the Black Sea and from Crimean ports, unless they want all of them to be destroyed, but Russians, they still keep some of their ships there. And well, this is the logical consequences. But okay, now let's go to the more southern front lines, where Ukrainian special forces, White Wolves, they were able to destroy in just one night very effective night, at least six Russian tanks, one raider and approximately 90 Russian soldiers. But Russians, they had their response in the south as well. They used their Lansen drone and destroyed the Ukrainian decoy which represented American Howitzer M109. But most importantly, Ukrainians were able to destroy a crucial supply road specifically a railroad of Russians located in Militopol. Approximately 150 meters of rail tracks are now completely unusable for trains. And this was a so-called depot where Russian trains, specifically from Crimea, were coming to Militopol once again, bringing fuel, supplies, arms, ammunition, and then from Militopol it was going all the way across the rest of the south and the east of Ukraine. And taking into consideration that one of the biggest offensive of Ukrainians right now is to the south of Robotine, and this is also where Russians were bringing their reinforcements from Militopol, this at least temporarily disruption will most certainly create favorable opportunities for Ukrainians in this Zaporozhye front line. But you know what? Besides having problems in Ukraine, Putin has some major issues right under his nose. And specifically what I'm talking about is that Kadyrov during his speech in a favor of 205th anniversary of Grozny is the capital of Chechnya, he mentioned that Joseph Stalin was in fact a very big traitor, not the Chechen people, but Stalin himself, because he was the one forcing people of Chechnya and all the other Caucasians to force them away from their land, from their homes and from their territory. And some of you might know that Joseph Stalin is one of the biggest, if not the biggest idol and symbol for Putin, because he constantly refers to the great sacrifice of Soviet people during the Second World War and that those decisions were pretty much possible and necessary because of strong and confident leadership of Stalin himself. And basically Kadyrov attacking Stalin just like this, calling him a traitor and betrayer. It's basically obviously he cannot attack Putin directly yet. But this is like one of the first steps, how Kadyrov wants to kind of looks like separate himself from Putin, at least a little bit. 
And also, we also right now can see that Kadyrov probably overcame his health problems, or at least in the process of recovering, because he does not look that bloated anymore. But we still do not know yet if Putin was directly involved in his kidney problems, or this was just a regular health complications. But most importantly, in case all of this is true, is that Putin was involved in Kadyrov's health problems, in case of Kadyrov by attacking Joseph Stalin, pretty much being passive-aggressive towards Putin himself. Putin is risking at losing probably his best and the most powerful ally, the Chechens, who will never follow any request or order from Putin, unless it comes from someone like Kadyrov himself. And if Kadyrov is no longer loyal to Putin, you can only assume what will happen on both sides. And just when you thought that this was enough? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> because according to the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Sergei Lavrov, Russia was always deceived in the past, uh, everyone was telling lies to us. But you know what? We are ready to talk with Ukraine. Just not about the ceasefire. Besides that, Sergei Lavrov also referred to the declaration from July 16th, 1990, and he said that Russia will consider the territorial integrity of Ukraine as long as this, as this country does not participate or join any alliances, obviously referring to NATO. But the fact is the fact, Sergei Lavrov, being the Minister of Foreign Affairs, is, I would say, at least top 10 or maybe even top 5 people in the Russian government. And if he says things like this, it means that the attitude of Russians, especially within the authorities and the government, slowly starts to change in favor of ending this war as soon as possible. But obviously, unfortunately, the war will not stop until Putin says so. But I mean, just think about it. If every single person within the Russian government will be against this war and there will be only one Putin left, who like, we need to keep fighting, Ukraine are full of bad people, we need to liberate Ukrainians from Ukrainians. How long do you think he will last? when his entire inner circle, oligarchs, and everyone else with power within Russia will be against him. Because it will only take one person to start the inevitable revolution against the regime of Putin. As for now, unfortunately, once again, Russia does not have people like this, but they always come unexpected. Because, I mean, imagine, if we already knew who will be the next opposition to Putin, most certainly FSB knew about this guy or girl months before us. So obviously, we'll just wait and maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. Maybe even in the near future. So just please keep your eyes open. I will keep making these updates and as soon as something happens like this, I'll make sure to make a video as soon as possible. If you don't want to miss it, just please consider subscribing to my channel. Only takes one click. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support and see you on Tuesday.